Hello, everyone. Um, so, yeah, uh, my name is Pierre, and I'm going to talk to you about how we provide uh, data where none existed before at Journalism++. Plus Plus. So, uh, first of all, a few words about me. So, my name is Pierre Romera. Uh, I'm uh, 27, and I learned coding when I was a children. Uh, by myself, and I do the same for uh, journalism. So basically, uh, I'm a kind of a hacker that learned to do journalism into a newsroom. Uh, it leads me to uh, create my own company a few uh, years ago. Uh, it's Journalism++, Plus Plus, so basically what uh, Journalism++ Plus Plus is. Uh, we are uh, an agency, we provide services to media. Uh, to NGO and other organization. And we also uh, use the money we get from those uh, services to uh, create investigation of our own. So uh, when we do this investigation, we find partners around the world and we publish this investigation at the same time in many countries. So somehow it's very, uh, it's very uh, powerful to broadcast the idea. We also do a lot of training and education in journalism school, so uh, we are kind of a specialist of the um, combination of journalism and developing programming. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, basically my, uh, my specialty. Um, another word about Journalism++, Plus Plus, we are an European company. Uh, this is very important. We are between uh, Paris and Berlin. We are a very small team, we are only four at J++. Uh, but we work uh, between two capitals, and we work with media around the world. So uh, because we do that, we can work on global issues that apply to several countries at the same time. Uh, also, uh, we believe that data journalism is not, it, uh, it's not just number, it's not just uh, using data visualization, it's also giving a voice to the people that are voiceless, that because the data uh, help us to find stories that are hidden into uh, a lot of amount of information. Also, we do projects that focus on uh, people and try to solve issues. Uh, today, oh no, last word, um, we are all uh, nerds. It means that uh, at J++, our small team is composed of people that are developers, but also journalists and also project manager. We all uh, mix several skills, and that's why uh, I think it works. Uh, also, we use programming to do uh, all kinds of journalism. It means creating databases, but it also means uh, find, finding data and present the data. So we do a lot of things with programming, maybe too much, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, that's our way to work. Today, uh, I'm going to talk to you about Rent's Watch. So uh, basically, a few years ago, we chose to uh, move to Berlin. A part of our team moved to Berlin. Uh, it was an obvious choice because when you look out the rent for offices or flats in Berlin, it's very cheap. It's uh, one of the cheapest uh, city in Europe. Also, uh, when you consider uh, renting a house as a, a huge expense, it's very important in Europe because uh, here is a statement, one person out of four spend more than 40% of her or him, his revenue to a landlord. So it means that for a flat tenant, rent is something very important. It's almost half of uh, the revenue. So it's something very important to, uh, to choose the city where you want to live or you want to work. The problem is if you want to choose another city, we choose Berlin because we knew Berlin, but if you want to choose another city, there is no uh, database, there is no place to find insight about the rents around Europe. So basically, you can't know if it's cheaper to live in Berlin or Cologne or, I don't know, London. Well, you know London, it's more expensive, of course. But there is no databases about that. So that's why uh, we created Rent, Rent Watch. And now you can know if a city is cheaper than another city. And even in the city, you can know which neighborhood is the cheapest because we create this huge database. I think it's the biggest database about uh, rents in Europe and maybe the world. Uh, so I think it's the largest because it's probably the only one. Uh, we do have 1.5 million of uh, flats, of uh, price of flats in our database. It means that we have uh, 1.5 million of uh, space, location, and price 
of flats in Europe. And with those uh, prices, we can do a lot of aggregation, computation, etc. We still add points every day to our database to improve it, and we are trying to expand it to uh, Brazil and uh, some, pay, some country in uh, Asia. Uh, you can find everything we made with uh, Renswatch under this uh, URL, renswatch.com. So how did we do? Um, as I say, there is no official database. There is no uh, authority that monitors the rents around the world and gives the data to the people. So we use the data that is present to every country. This data is advertisement. Because there is advertisement in every country, even the deepest and darkest uh, dictatorships, there is advertisement. So we focus on those advertisements and we try to build our database using advertisement all around the world. So basically, an advertisement contains the location of a flat, the price, and of course the size. So we can compute many things just with these three information. Uh, to do that, we build an army of tiny robots. Uh, so many of you are not hackers, you are not uh, computer scientists. Uh, so may, you may not know what hacker, uh, sorry, a scrapper is. Well, basically, it's a very small program that is uh, focused on doing one single thing, extract data, structured content from any sources. So uh, we made a lot of those tiny programs to extract data from many different websites. Uh, and we put this unstructured content into a structured uh, environment. So what is structured content? That's very simple. Uh, here, a simple statement. So around Christmas, the rent price slightly increase in the center of the Swedish capital. This is an information, but it's not structured. Here, the same information, but in a structured way. So it's basically three flats with the size, the price, the latitude, the longitude, and the date. So with this kind of table, you can extract many kind of information. You can create map, you can create graphics, you can create whatever you want. And this is our biggest challenge as data journalists, to get this kind of structured content, a content that can be read by a machine and a human. So uh, to help us build this tiny uh, army of robots, we uh, create a framework. So basically, uh, a framework is a collection of tiny source code that helps you to um, build softwares. So we make this framework to help us to build those tiny robots. There are uh, 41 of them, so it's a lot of work. We have to focus on common uh, features. So this framework um, is doing five simple things. It calculates the price per square meter, which is basically the information we want. Uh, it converts currencies to euro. It manages errors, because those websites uh, change every day, so you have to be able to detect when they change and track errors. We also um, use this framework to uh, use proxies or VPN to hide the identity of the robot, because as you may guess, uh, those websites are trying to uh, slow us, to uh, stop us from getting data from them. And also, he sends us a daily report of activity. Every day, I receive in my inbox an email saying, OK, yesterday, I scrapped this number of documents, and I had this number of error for each website. So it's pretty, it's pretty useful. Uh, this framework, uh, the presentation is a little bit buggy, but uh, this framework can be found at this address on our GitHub, where there is many of our projects. Um, sorry. So yeah, once you get the data, uh, what can you do? Basically, we started to create a few maps, 10 maps for the biggest city in Europe, where we have data, where, with an overview. We have a map that say, OK, this is where you can find the cheapest apartment uh, in this city. or uh, that's the way the price uh, change over the month for this city. So we do that for several cities, and uh, we present the data on the website. But we still have a problem. We started this project uh, one year ago now, and we can't have the data before that date. So we can't say if the price changed a lot 
between uh, 2014 or 2013, I don't know. We can say uh, before that. So we created a quiz into our website where we ask people to know um, if their rent is too expensive. So basically, they fill a form, how much they pay, for which size, for which location. And so the algorithm use our database to say, OK, it's very expensive for that city, or it's not. And at the end, once we get this feedback to the user, we ask her to uh, give us her, uh, her location and if she want to uh, save the data in our database. So basically, our uh, database is getting bigger with uh, those contribution. We have a lot of those contributions. We also want the people to be able to use our data. So we create an API. Again, for those who are not developers, what is an API? It's basically a way to uh, extract data from our database and to use it in your own program. So this uh, API is completely free, and it gives you aggregated data about trends in uh, many uh, places in Europe. And so uh, a few media try to uh, create content with our data. For example, here, uh, it's El Confidencial in uh, Madrid. No, Barcelona, sorry. Uh, they made this uh, subway map of the rent price. So for each subway, uh, subway station, you have the price of the, um, the rent. Uh, Paris also has its own. And I think there is other city where we are trying to make this kind of map. Um, another good example of reusing our data is what um, Le Temps in uh, Geneva in Switzerland made. They created a robot that used our data to say every week here in uh, Geneva, here is the price of the rent. So it's a great example. Yeah, that's it for the rent swatch. Uh, this is not our first project as uh, journalism as journalism plus plus. We created before um, a huge database called the migrant files. Basically, the migrant files try to monitor the uh, refugee crisis in Europe, because there is a lot of people trying to join Europe, and there is also a lot of people dying on their way to Europe. So we try to count those people. Uh, to do so, we combine a lot of databases, we deduplic uh, deduplicated them, and we uh, cross sources to have an estimation of 30,000 uh, deaths since 2000. So that's a lot of deaths, but this is the only number we can count as, uh, as J++. You can find also every information about this investigation under this address. Um, so yeah, uh, this number is awful. Uh, it's breathtaking, but it's not exactly uh, what we wanted to say. It wasn't the story. We, want, we didn't want to say, um, wow, there is uh, this number of dead. It's, it's horrible. We wanted to say that no one before us did this calculation. Even the public institutions that spend a lot of money to uh, keep people away, they spend, they spend billions of euros, but they didn't know how many death there is at our borders. So that's what this project was all about. And it was um, a little bit of our disappointment when we started to collaborate with journalists around the world using this data. They all think they have to communicate around this number, but they, it wasn't the main message of our investigation. The main message is to say that the, that the lack of interest from public institutions on those men, uh, women, and children is completely cruel, and we should care about them uh, either. So um, we start this investigation in late uh, 2014, but we stopped uh, because a few organizations try to uh, uh, count the death themselves. They use our data, and they try to uh, use their own resources to count those deaths. So that's why we stopped to, uh, to do it ourselves. Um, it was also one of our uh, objectives to uh, um, encourage people to do it themselves. So yeah, what next? Because we do a lot of investigation, uh, we have a lot of ongoing projects. You can find most of our uh, projects under our GitHub, uh, because everything is open source. So we encourage you to use our project and, I don't know, improve them and 
send it back to us. Uh, so yeah, everything is under uh, this GitHub. We also try to create tools. We not only uh, do investigation, we want to help other journalists to do their work. Uh, and our tools are also uh, available under this uh, GitHub. We are currently working on a project named JQuest. It's about to uh, be released uh, in a few weeks. Uh, so uh, this uh, platform is um, basically a convergence of training for journalism students and cross-border investigation. Basically, we give the student free course material, and they are contributing to a global investigation in Europe uh, when they do their exercise on the platform. This is our project. So yeah, it's not released yet, so stay tuned for more information. And yeah, that's it. Uh, so if you have any question about what we do or we work, uh, or it is to be a hacker into uh, uh, around many journalists, I'll be happy to uh, answer your question on Twitter or by email, or of course here, uh, if you are here. Um, so yeah, thank you very much. <laughs>